Last time we finished black basing the belly of the door 335 anteater in 1 to 48 scale from Tamiya. In this episode we're going to spray the real base coat in several layers and we're going to start to black base the first layers on the top side of this awkward aircraft with an easy way to get the splinter camouflage right. But there are many boring little tasks like masking. What I do before putting the tape on a painted surface, I stick the tape on my forearm. This way it loses a little bit grip and doesn't tear off any previous paint when I remove it. If you already checked out the last video in this series and the video about black basing the Focke Wolf 190, you know that over the random lines and dots which you see now comes the original base coat color. I thin the base coat in RLM65 down with a ratio about 70% thinner and 30% paint. And I spray it with a bigger needle, like this 0.4 needle at about 1 psi. I try to spray the small things first, so I don't forget them and I get the feeling of the airbrush and the paint. As you can see it takes several layers until I achieve my wanted coverage of the random lines and dots. This is a good thing, because I want that the first layer gives some structure and shines through. The panel lines stay automatically a little bit darker. You can fill some panels first and then spray over the surface to get some different covered panels. The black basing is shining through the base color, which gives a richer structure and a variation than just the plain base color. Ok, now we almost finished the underside in RLM65. The black basing technique is pretty easy. You can go over the surface as many times as you like, until you achieved your wanted coverage of the surface. I like to really keep the first layer shining through. With the upcoming washes and oil colors, it automatically gets darker. Thank you. 
to avoid some overspray, I masked the finished base coat of RLM65 to prepare for the two other camo colors. Same as in the last episode, as a first step I used the camo color, this time RLM82 and RLM81, and lightened these two colors up with a light grey. I thin it just a little bit more than for a normal base coat, and I mix it again directly in the cup with the pipette. Now, to get the outlines of the splint to come right, I used the instructions from Tamiya. I printed them in the right size on normal paper and cut them out. Now I just hold these stencils in place while I outline the camo. Then as usual I fill the space with random lines and dots. The air pressure on my airbrush is rather high. That's why the lines are not clean. But for black basing it doesn't matter. With these circles or dots there is more variation. But later on to apply the base coat, I check that the air pressure is just right. With the second base color RLM82, I mix it with the same light grey and just fill the missing spaces. I overlap it with the previous RLM81 that there aren't any gaps between the two colors. I think these two colors and the camouflage scheme just look fantastic. I'm looking forward to paint the base coat over this first layer and see how the colors work together. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell that you don't miss the next episode about this door 335. I wish every one of you a great start into the new week.